Hi everybody and welcome back to the channel. In today's video I'm going to teach you two ways to preserve your tomatoes that don't involve canning. So my family and I just came back from spending a week on Manitoulin Island in Ontario and it was absolutely wonderful. Um, feeling refreshed and ready to hit the ground running in terms of food preservation and that's a good thing because we came home to ripe tomatoes and a heat wave. Now because we grow indeterminate tomatoes, our crop doesn't come in all at once. It kind of trickles in. So when I have smaller amounts like I do now, I've got two varieties, actually three varieties of cherry tomatoes in this bowl, and I've got some slicers and two varieties of paste tomatoes, it's not really enough to motivate me to want to crank up the canner in 32 degree heat wave. Uh, so I have a few other ways that I like to preserve my tomatoes that don't involve canning or just putting them in a bag and freezing them. Now these both will take up some fridge space, but I promise you they are delicious and well worth it. So the first recipe we're going to do is uh, a lacto-fermented cherry tomato recipe. And this is one of our favorites. Now this can also be done with whole paste tomatoes. I have seen people take recipes similar to this and do them on a much larger scale. So in actual like food grade buckets, you can get them from ice cream stores, that kind of place. They'll either sell them to you or just give them to you for free. And I've seen people do these lacto-fermented tomatoes in much larger quantities. We like to do them in small jars because what we do with them afterwards is we strain out all the liquid and then I just blend up the tomatoes for a raw pasta sauce. And it's one of our favorite meals in the winter time. Uh, but you can also enjoy them on their own in salads. They have kind of like a zesty little pop to them, which make them really fun. So what you'll need is a clean and sterilized jar. I just pour some, pour some boiling water over it. You're gonna need about two cups of salt water. I've got three teaspoons of Himalayan sea salt with good, fresh, clean drinking water. And then you're gonna need either some kind of fermentation weight or a substitute for a fermentation weight. Before I got um, the mason top system, which is the pickle pebbles and the pickle pipe, I, would, I got creative and I used Ziploc bags full of rocks, whatever you need to do to weigh down the vegetables under the brine. Um, and then you'll need a lid of some kind. And I'll have the links to the mason top system below. I'm not an affiliate for them, uh, but I just love their product and it has made fermenting really easy for me. But again, it's not necessary. You just have to remember to burp your jars if you don't have a fermentation system. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to fill up my jar with cherry tomatoes and then optional additions would be things like a whole garlic clove, uh, sprigs of rosemary, thyme, oregano, you can even add basil, whatever kind of flavors that you like to have in your pasta sauce. Think about that when you're making your lacto fermented cherry tomatoes. So what I have today is some fresh rosemary from the garden and one garlic clove. I used to do this with two, but my son found it a little too garlicky when we blended everything up, so I've dropped it down to one. And I'm going to use two different varieties of cherry tomatoes here. I've got some large ones and some small ones. So let's get started on making our lacto-fermented cherry tomatoes. So what's really neat about fermenting is that there's really no wrong way to do this. Uh, you just need to fill up your jar. And so I've got three different varieties of cherry tomatoes here. I've got some sun golds, I have some black cherry tomatoes, and I think these are called Aunt Molly's. So I'm gonna do a variety of these because for our second recipe, I still wanna keep some of my cherry tomatoes. So you just wanna fill up your jar and at any point, you know, toss in your garlic clove. And I like to just add my rosemary and everything in there as well and just keep filling. So if you've been following my channel for a while you know that I really like lacto-fermented recipes because of the added health benefits that lacto-fermentation provides and so what I'll do is I'll link my playlist here. I have lots of lacto-fermented recipes on uh, both YouTube and my blog and I have a recipe, a written recipe for this as well on my blog which I will link below too. But it's, it's nice when you have all of those added benefits of more bioavailability in terms of B vitamins. And of course, the fermentation process creates uh, lactobacillus culture, which is a positive gut flora bacteria 
that helps and aids in digestion. So lots of really great reasons why you would want to do this. So you want to kind of pack those tomatoes in there, but you don't want to squish them. So sometimes it's a little bit, ever, anybody ever play Tetris? <laughs> I'm playing tomato Tetris right now. So I've got one clove of garlic in there. I have three sprigs of rosemary and now I've filled my jar with my cherry tomatoes. And like I said, you can do this on a larger scale and then just use whole or sliced up um, paste tomatoes, but make sure that you're using a food grade bucket, that it's a bucket designed to have food in it. Um, and remember that you are gonna have to burp your lid. So now I'm just gonna pour over the salt water. And I like to put my weight in first, so that way it doesn't kind of splash up. And again, the weight isn't necessary. You just need some way to keep your tomatoes below the brine so you can get creative. Um, like I said, I've used Ziploc bags full of rocks before. Here we are, I'm just filling up my jar. Nice and easy. Haven't heated up my kitchen at all. So I'm gonna fill all the way to the top. And this is when, if you don't have a fermentation system, you would just put a regular lid on, making sure that you're burping your ferment at least once or twice a day to have that gas release. But if you have a fermentation system like the pickle pipe, this is when you would screw that on. So I like to keep these on the counter for two to three days and then maybe I'll taste one of the tomatoes. The max, because um, this is gonna produce a lot of gas and it's really going to ferment quickly. Some things ferment faster than others. Tomatoes would be one of them. I would say four days max. And then you'll just remove your weight, take your fermentation lid off, pop, pop a regular lid on and tuck them into the, the fridge until you're ready to eat them. And like I said, one of my favorite ways to enjoy these is to strain out the liquid, dump the contents into my blender, pulse a few times, and then you have a raw pasta sauce. And I don't heat it up after that, I just pour that onto hot pasta and we eat it, um, serve immediately kind of thing. So that is the lacto-fermented tomatoes. And next I'm going to show you how to do roasted oil pack tomatoes. So one of my new favorite ways to preserve tomatoes is to roast them and oil pack them. Again, this is going to require some space in the fridge, but trust me, it is well worth it. In the winter months, when we pulled out these delicious roasted olive oil covered tomatoes and we had them on sandwiches and pastas and, and so many ways, even just enjoying them with some cheese and crackers, they were absolutely delicious. And, um, like I said, one of our newfound favorite ways to preserve tomatoes. So while this does involve some heat, what we do in the summer is we have a Breville toaster oven that we put outside. So while I do have to roast these, I'm not going to be heating up my house because the toaster oven is outside. So I like to use cherry tomatoes for this. So for what I have um, left for the big guys, I'll probably cut them in half. But you don't want a tomato that has too much water, so you want to avoid that. So none of your big slicers, paste tomatoes or cherry tomatoes are probably your best bet. But you can really use any type of tomato you want. And like I said, I'm just going to chunk these. And you're going to line your tray up with some tomatoes. So as you can see, my tomatoes are almost all chopped up and for some good measure, I added in some garlic to roast in there as well. So once you have your tray full, you're going to want to drizzle with a nice high quality organic extra virgin olive oil. And then I'm going to top off with our own homemade herbal salt. And I will make sure that I post the recipe for that up here as well. I highly recommend that everybody make their own herbal salt because it's delicious and it makes really nice gifts as well. So this is a mixture of things like basil and rosemary and thyme. Oh, what else do we have in there? Oregano, lots of delicious things all blended up with the salt. So I'm going to, I like to be generous with this. And then we're gonna pop these into a preheated oven, 400 degrees, and you want them in there for about 20 minutes. We want, it, we want those skins to split and everything to be nice and roasted and ready to go. And once that is completed, I'll show you the next step of the process.
So we just finished roasting up the last of our tomatoes. So this took um, two full trays plus this little bit. And I am so excited. I got this jar from my dad. It's one of these old school canning jars. And of course it's bigger than just a liter. And I knew I had to fill it with roasted tomatoes. Um, so all you wanna do after you roast them is you're just going to pack them into a glass jar of your choice. It really doesn't matter what kind of jar. Have you got an old pickle jar, mason jar, whatever works. And so you're going to tuck that in. You want to make sure you're leaving about an inch of head space at the top. And if you don't have a lot of tomatoes coming in, you can just do this gradually. Um, you know, pop them in the fridge in between and then add more tomatoes. Just be careful when you're adding hot tomatoes to a jar that's been in the fridge. You don't want it to crack. So the key to preserving these and having them last all winter long is to ensure that the tomatoes are below the olive oil and that nothing is exposed to oxygen because any of the tomatoes that are exposed to oxygen are going to go moldy on you, okay? So just really be cognizant of that when you're packing your jars and you're filling it with your olive oil afterwards. And once again, this is one of those times where I wish I had smell-o-vision because I can't tell you how delicious these smell. So I've got my jar nice and packed up. Mmm delicious and I'll tuck this out of the way. So the next step is to wipe your jar down on the outside again. Anything exposed to oxygen, even in the fridge, will eventually go moldy. So it's really important that the outside of your jar is nice and clean. And so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to pour in some olive oil and I have a, whoop, I have a barbecue skewer here. As you can see, it's taller than the jar. And I'm gonna use this to ensure, you know, get any of those air bubbles out and make sure that all of those tomatoes are covered in the olive oil. So I'll pour in a little bit first. And I get my olive oil from Organic Matters Foods. If you guys, if anybody's Canadian, check them out. You can get bulk organic food, rice, lentils, beans, wheat berries, um, anything you could possibly need, coconut oil, uh, chocolate chips, you name it, they've got it. So I'm just using my barbecue skewer and going through and making sure that the olive oil gets down to all the areas because even air pockets, you know, could result in moldy tomatoes, which nobody wants. It's pretty gross, right? There I go. Just like with canning, you know, you're kind of creating some space. And like I said, these are delicious as a part of, say, some bruschetta on top of pasta, on sandwiches. Um, I was known to just pop into the fridge and sneak a tomato and just eat it right out of the jar every now and again. Now, don't freak out. Olive oil, when put into the fridge, is going to solidify, okay? So it's gonna, it's gonna harden on you. There's nothing wrong. As long as your tomatoes are below the olive oil, you are good to go. And I think I've got almost all those air pockets out. Again, just making sure, oh, there's one right at the bottom there. So again, it's key, you can use a knife for this, but because I had such a tall jar, I had to make sure that all those little air bubbles are covered. Well, not covered, dealt with. <laughs> all right, how delicious is this? The reason I went with such a big jar this year is because last year we used a small jar and we were really, really sad when they were gone. So again, I'm just going to make sure all those tomatoes are below the olive oil and then I'm just going to top off with a little bit more olive oil. Again, I'm going to repeat, anything that's exposed to oxygen is susceptible to molding on you, okay? So you want to make sure that all of your tomatoes are below the olive oil. I'm going to do one last wipe. Make sure everything's really clean. And then I'm gonna pop my lid on and store it in the fridge. Now, of course, it's always smart. Make sure you label everything. You know, you'll say you'll remember, but if you do multiple batches of this or say you wanna do some peppers in olive oil or something, you're not gonna remember. So make sure you label it and always keep it in your fridge. You just wanna pull it out of the fridge when you're ready to consume them. Isn't this a lovely sight? I've got some lacto-fermented cherry tomatoes, which we'll enjoy, we can enjoy in as little as four days, which is really awesome. Don't forget to check out that playlist I have 
with all of my other fermented recipes. And this one is also on the blog, so check in the description below. That information will be down there. And of course, I have this gorgeous jar of roasted olive oil preserved tomatoes that we will enjoy all winter long. If you like my content, please consider subscribing to the channel and don't forget to join my email list as well. And I want to take just a couple of seconds to mention that on September 2nd, 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, I'm going to be doing a live webinar on Zoom about building immunity naturally. And we're going to discuss everything from gut health to what supplements to take and the difference between immune stimulating and immunomodulating herbs and much more. If you can't make it to the live one, don't worry, there will be a recording and you will have lifetime access to it. So I'll put the link to that webinar and how you can sign up and everything below as well. If you have any questions or comments about these two methods of preservation, make sure you leave a comment. And until next time, this is Corinne from Spirea Herbs, wishing you health and wellness. Thank you.